All right, guys, let's hop into another Goosebumps episode, or two, probably two or three, because these aren't double episodes, so 20 minutes. So watch, as usual, watch this shit go, like, double the time of the episode. But this is Season 3, Episode 16, Bride of the Living Dummy, which I already did a fucking over 50-minute video on Night of the Living Dummy 3. Don't know how that happened, but it did. So, the whole thing I've mentioned before with Slappy, the, the ventriloquist dummy here, it's just such a ripoff of Child's Play. Like, you have Night of the Living Dummy 1, 2, and 3, just like Child's Play. Then we got Bride of the Living Dummy, just like Bride of Chucky. Uh, and I got out of goosebumps, like when they started going with the different types of books and stuff. But I'm pretty sure there was a Son of Slappy, which is your <laughs> seed of Chucky. Like... It's so obvious, but like I said in the video for Night of the Living Dummy 3, it's just fun. And Slappy is such a, just a fun character, and he has his own little traits. So let's watch Bride of the Living Dummy and talk about it. All right, so we open up here with the amazing Jimmy, who's a ventriloquist. And he ends up just in an alley and stumbles upon Slappy's case. And he opens it up. And he sees Slappy, and then the wind blows his little spell that brings him back to life, the card that people have to read the language on to reanimate Slappy. And he does. And then we get Slappy. Just It's so good to see Slappy here, not like in Night of the Living Dummy 3. And it's the same as in this, as in Night of the Living Dummy 2, as an actual puppet-sized thing. Like, he looks like a ventriloquist dummy in Night of the Living Dummy 3. I mentioned in that video how stupid it looks that you know it's just some short guy running around. Like, it doesn't look like a puppet or a dummy, whatever. I say this in all the videos. Dummy, puppet, doesn't matter. I just did the Puppet, ma uh, puppet Master film, so puppet's going to come out a lot. So, he ends up saying to him, like, Hello, Jimmy, and I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. I did this too much in Night of the Living Dummy 3. I gotta not talk like Slappy. So we have the amazing Jimmy here who's putting on a ventriloquist show for a bunch of students at the school or something like that. And this was one of my favorite episodes as a kid. Like, just something about it. One, that I loved Slappy, and two, being able to see Bride of Slappy here. And they're putting on this show... And Slappy and Jimmy has this arrangement that, to make his show better, Slappy will obey and talk on his own and make Jimmy look like an amazing ventriloquist. And then he gets distracted, Slappy, during the show, and as he stares off into the distance, and he sees, I want to say her name is Katie. Let's see how good my memory is from so long ago. I know the older sister, I'm pretty sure her name is Jillian. Pretty sure Katie's the younger one. And she has her own little doll. And this one's a doll. It's not a fucking dummy. So <laughs> this one is an actual doll. And Slappy just gets fixated on her, or so you think. And think that he's setting his sights on this uh, female doll here to be his bride. Damn, I'm good. Yeah, Katie is the younger sister. And her doll is Mary Ellen. And when they walk out of the show... They ask how the show was to Katie, and she says it was all right, and notices that Mary Ellen's missing. So she starts freaking out and starts saying, like, if Mary Ellen says if I ever lose her or something happens to her, then she'll do something bad to her. So we already have some uh, little suspicions on Mary Ellen here as her, this little doll. And then Jillian and the pudgy friend guy that's with them, forget his name. His name wasn't important. <laughs> And he ends up going one way, and Jillian goes the other way backstage, trying to find where Mary Ellen could be. So Jillian's walking backstage, and she hears Slappy arguing with Jimmy. And Jimmy basically saying, we're partners here, you can't do this, and then I'm tired of being treated like a slave. And then Slappy basically tells him he is. But you are my slave, Jimmy. You are. I gotta stop doing that. <laughs> And then Jimmy and Jillian start talking, and she's, he just tries to hide the f 
the fact that Slappy's real, obviously, and saying it was just an act that there were new act they're working on and that they would have to figure out like how to deflect that he's actually alive. So he says that it's just like a new act they're doing with like he put motors and gears in Slappy to make it more lifelike. I mean, who's going to believe that a dummy's actually real? So I'm pretty sure she accepts this, like, is what's going on. And yeah, some of those last thoughts made no sense. <laughs> and she ends up, like, talking to him, and Jimmy ends up saying to her that he thinks that she wants an autograph. So he, she's like, no, I'm not here for that. I'm just looking for my sister and her doll. And he says, that, well, if we find the doll, then give me your address and uh, I'll let you know. And she ends up getting a package the next day and it is Slappy from the Amazing Jimmy saying that he's moving on with a different act and he has to retire Slappy, but he needs a great home. And he ends up giving it to Jillian, which dick move. <laughs> but we find out a little later he didn't really have a choice here. So Jillian leaves the Amazing Jimmy, and they, she ends up walking back to a pudgy friend, and Katie's there with Mary Ellen. And she says that Mary Ellen wanted to see Slappy, and she got lost. And Jillian saying, dolls don't get lost. <laughs> it's just a stupid doll, which we know a little later, Mary Ellen's not happy to uh, keep hearing this. And Jillian's father we meet, and he's like trying to break the Guinness Book of Records for most birdhouses made or some stupid shit like that. So she gets slappy delivered, right? And she reads the note that he left saying, after I met you today, then I thought you were the perfect person to take care of my friend Slappy and then I'm going to be moving on without him. She, she just heard from him like an hour ago when she was talking with him. And he was saying the whole thing, that they're working on a new act where they argue and fight with each other, and he put motors in, and now all of a sudden, like, that same day, like an hour later, as soon as they get home, basically, she gets the note saying that you're the perfect person to take care of him and stuff. She doesn't find this suspicious at all. Like, he just said that he's working on a whole new routine with Slappy. And then just completely 180s and says, nah, I'm not doing anything with him no more. Like, you take this dummy and give him a good home. And then Katie comes downstairs because Jillian's about to leave Slappy in the basement because she thinks he's creepy. And she's saying that Mary Ellen, her doll, wants Slappy to sleep up in their bedroom with them. And then she proceeds to get bit on the hand, Jillian, by Slappy and can't get her hand out. And then just chocks it up to it must be those motors that he put in there. <laughs> Again, it's like you're not going to go to this dummy's alive. That's like the last thing you're going to think until you actually see this thing alive and moving around. So, I mean, it makes sense, but I'd be freaked the fuck out. <laughs> like, if this dummy just clamped down on my hand with his teeth or mouth or whatever they have, he has teeth. <laughs> I don't know if they, like, bite or anything like that. Seems like it because she's in a decent amount of pain here. And then both Katie and uh, Jillian wake up and they see Slappy perched on like one of the tables in their room with the mirror right there. And it's written, says, I want my bride. And you hear him say, I don't know if they hear him say anything because he doesn't move his mouth. And it like echoes like it's a thought. But it, he says this so many times in this episode. It's like, I want my bride. I'm going to lose my voice if I keep doing that. I got to stop. Might need a Slappy voice intervention soon. Then it turns out that the mother is missing her wedding ring. And she blames, obviously, Katie or uh, Jillian. Both of them did not take it. So she's off to go to some place. The mom, she's going out for a little bit for the night. And she says, I want that wedding ring back in the box, like, by the time I get home. So we know Slappy's getting that wedding ring because he wants his bride. Which is stupid as it is. What does a ventriloquist dummy want a bride for? Like, I'm pretty sure he's not anatomically correct, like Chucky is, as he mentions in Bride of Chucky, that he's anatomically correct, and then we get the hilarious sex scene between Tiffany and Chucky. Ventriloquist dummy here, Slappy, really don't think he's anatomically correct. <laughs> and I don't think I can guarantee that the doll Mary Ellen isn't either. 
so why have a bride in the first place? Like, why does he want a bride? He can't have sex with her. It's not like he's an evil ventriloquist dummy. It's not like they're gonna, he's going to do a 180 completely, not be evil anymore, and then just live in the Bahamas or some shit with Mary Ellen. Like, I don't know. It makes no sense. Yeah, the mom's going to aerobics class, which, of course. Yeah, so she's back with Jimmy O. James, the amazing Jimmy, talking to him. And nice little Easter egg when she sees all the other dummies that Slappy destroyed. And Jimmy O. James says that these were all Slappy's rivals. Nice little reference back to Night of the Living Dead. Uh, Living Dead. Night of the Living Dummy 3, where uh, Rocky, like the guard, like the mob-looking gob, gob, the mob-looking dummy. That was like the slave to Slappy in part three. We get to see his head here. So that's a nice little Easter egg. And then he starts saying that Slappy's pure evil and that you can't destroy the evil in that dummy. And she says, so you sent him to me? And he says that Slappy forced him to write the letter and forced him to be sent over there, which makes sense because Slappy wants his bride. So let's see if he gets her at the end. And then she says that she spent like half her babysitting money and stuff to get here in a cab to meet with Jimmy again. And she brought Slappy in the case with him, with her. And he says, like, get that thing out of there. And then he, she opens it up and her dog pops out. Now this, <laughs> this dog didn't make a fucking peep from whenever Slappy put him in this suitcase, in this case that he comes in. All the way on a cab ride, all the way down here, through the building, to the backstage area, to Jimmy, and shut up the entire time through their conversation until she let him out thinking that she had Slappy. So stupid. Like, he really, this dog did not make a sound. That's so unbelievably dumb. But it is what it is. It's friggin' goosebumps. And then she figures out, well, if Kevin, the dog, if he's here, then that means Slappy is still at home. And the parents, like, come home late at night. She said she was going to aerobics class. It was daytime out. So I don't know how long this aerobics class is. But to me, it just sounds like I'm leaving to go cheat on your father. I'll be back later tonight. And then we cut back to the house, and Katie and Mary Ellen and Pudgy Friend are all watching some scary movie and like Katie's like asking are you getting scared and she's like holding her hands in front of her eyes it's cute it reminds me of me when I was six seven years old and getting into horror and stuff with certain things that I just got afraid of (laughs) like you're a kid what do you expect and she's sitting there with Mary Ellen and then pudgy friend is eating like candy and chips and stuff he's like I think I'm gonna be sick and he just runs to the bathroom and then we get a call to Katie from uh, Jillian telling her to get out of the house and that Slappy's there and he's not a dummy, he's evil. And then Pudgy Kid's in the bathroom saying, why do I eat so much? And then he tries leaving. And why do you eat so much? Look at him. He's fucking fat as can be. Like, he's not obese or anything. But totally within the realm of believability that he eats like this all the time. So he should be used to it by now. And then Slappy comes and locks him inside the bathroom. Harrison. That's the uh, Pudgy kid's name. Harrison. So Pudgy Harrison. And then Slappy shuts down the power in the house. Creepy stuff, man. And then Jillian gets home and runs away with Katie and says, Harrison will get help. Don't go anywhere. (laughs) We hear this so much. Where am I going to go? Like He's locked in the bathroom. And what type of bathroom? I know it's a thing, but like nowadays, even back in the 90s here, has a bathroom that locks from the outside with a key. I don't know. What a stupid engineering idea that was, whatever that was a thing. Glad they changed that. Getting locked in a bathroom from the outside? That's got to suck. Like, bad. Uh, then, like, they're running around the house and Slappy, for some reason, is in, like, the vent. And, like, there's, like, a grate. Like, he's just, like, holding on to it, trying to get in. 
or out or whatever whatever reason he's doing this. It's like makes no sense. And then two seconds later, they go around the corner and he's just standing there and shit. So he can apparently teleport like Jason Voorhees in like the later installments. So Katie, Mary Ellen, and Jillian all run to the basement. Well, Mary Ellen the doll doesn't run to the basement, but <laughs> she's holding her. And then plot twist. Mary Ellen is alive also. So we got two live evil fucking dummy slash dolls. And she starts telling uh, Katie to tell uh, her older sister to tell Jillian everything. And Katie starts saying that she tells me to do anything that she wants and threatens to hurt her family if she denies her whatever she wants. And when she saw Slappy at the show, she fell in love with him. And what Mary Ellen wants, Mary Ellen gets. <laughs> That's how she talks. Well, double twist coming your way here. And it's actually a decent twist. That he didn't want to marry Mary Ellen, the doll. He was he wants Katie as his wife. Or his slave, as he says a moment after he says being married to the most beautiful girl in the world. I want her. And says, you'll be mine, Katie. You'll be my slave forever. So make up your mind, Slappy. You want a fucking wife or you want a slave? Because it seems like you want a slave. Because he makes slaves out of everybody that he terrorizes. And then Mary Ellen gets pissed. She's like, after all I've done for you. And she starts freaking out on him. And then they start fighting. Looks all right. Like, the way that they animate the puppets and stuff like that. And the dummy and the doll. Whatever. Is good. Like, it looks decent. Much better than, like I said, with the little kid or short person who just ran around as Slappy in Part 3. So, they end up fighting like crazy, and they turn on the, uh, like a power saw, a table saw, and both the, uh, Mary Ellen and Slappy both get just torn apart and just sawed into pieces. And then, after they're cut apart on the floor, then both of their evil spirits or essences, like, fly out of them, and they think that they're gone for good. But then they're wondering what happened to Slappy? Like, that the evil can't be destroyed completely, so where is it now? And then the parents get home, and they say, why is Harrison locked in the bathroom? (laughs) And then they open it, and we see Harrison turn around, and he has bugged out ventriloquist dummy eyes, so he's turned into a human dummy which we see that also with Zane in uh, part 3 so fun episode like I said this is one of my favorites growing up and it holds up like it really does like it's a fun little watch a fun little 20 minutes or so so that is Bride of the Living Dummy and I'll do another one of these since they're so short But wherever you're from, hoping you're having a good day, afternoon, night, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.